Hi again, it's Joe Clark, and this is a kind of a part two to the um, Cisco Modeling Labs external connectivity video I did a while back, whereby I showed how to get uh, how to get uh, multiple VLANs trunk to your uh, Cisco Modeling Labs VM, and then creating multiple bridge interfaces so you could use those VLANs on your uh, or within your CML uh, labs or topologies. So the part two is, what if you wanted to trunk all the way to a virtual node uh, in Cisco Modeling Labs, meaning you didn't want to break the VLANs out in the Cisco Modeling Labs VM, you wanted to break them out, say, on an iOS v2 iOS v L2 switch uh, within a lab. So it took me a little bit of uh, tinkering here and there, but I, I figured out how to do it and I figured I'd share it with you. So let's just review a few things here. So I'll hop on over to, uh, to ESXi and uh, just familiarize yourself with, uh, familiar, re familiarize um, everyone with how the networking is set up. So I've got a port group in ESXi I call MC trunk. It's my trunking port group. And the key here is the VLAN ID in ESXi needs to be set to 4095. And that's kind of the special um, uh, numeric identifier for all of the VLANs. So we're gonna have all of the VLANs trunked. In my Cisco Modeling Labs VM, I've added a second interface. I'm not gonna mess with the primary interface. I've added a second interface um, in that MC trunk or in that 4095 port group. This is the interface that we're going to use as the outbound interface to, um, uh, to our external network. And we're going to trunk all our VLANs over that interface. So that's the ESXi side. Next, let's hop on over to cockpit. Um, and so this is the cockpit interface in the networking tab. Um, and here we've got, uh, I've already set it up. Uh, this bridge one, I call it bridge one. But you can see that it's got a, um, forget this interface right now, because I actually do have a running lab uh, connected to it. But it, when I added the second interface in ESXi, it created an ENS192 Ethernet interface. And I created a bridge, uh, bridge interface on top of that ENS192. Now, some of the things I had to do here to make sure this interface doesn't go down is I went into the IPv4 configuration and I marked that as disabled. Remember, this is a trunk interface. So yes, there's a native VLAN, VLAN 1, and maybe it's got IP like DHCP capabilities, but in my case, I don't have that, so don't bet on it. And you don't really want to manage CML via this interface anyway. So just disable IPv4, go to IPv6 and set that to ignore, and then click apply. Don't have to change anything else. This will keep the interface from going down. So that's the cockpit part, the cockpit setup. We're not done in cockpit yet. Now we have to hop on over here to the terminal. And we go into the terminal and go into pseudo mode. So make sure you're logged in as sysadmin, obviously in cockpit and privilege mode. Um, but drop then into pseudo in the terminal. And I use dash capital E for bring in the current environment, dash S gives me a shell. Um, and then we're going to do this command. So this is the, the key here, IP link set dev, the bridge interface we created. Remember I created bridge interface one over here in the networking tab and cockpit. Bridge one type bridge VLAN underscore filtering zero. So we're not gonna filter any of the, the dot one Q um, tags. We want all of that to get passed through. This is the key command. By default, it's one, and you just you don't see any traffic essentially because it's expected to be broken out on the uh, uh, at at the, the Linux level. So we run that command and we set filtering to zero. One other thing, I'm going to hop back here over to the networking tab in cockpit. Um, the uh, I had in the previous video, I layered some uh, VLAN interfaces on top of this. You cannot do that anymore. So if you're going to want to have a separate interface that's just trunked all the way through, make sure you create or add another physical interface in ESXi over here. You can't overload. You can't have one interface acting as a full trunk and broken out into VLANs um, at the CML uh, at the CML Linux level. So just be aware of that. Um, so if you need to create a third network adapter here, you can keep it in the same uh, port group in your trunk port group, but you're gonna need a, a new or separate interface on the Linux side. So 
Now that we've got that set up, remember VLAN filtering off, I'm going to hop on over here. I created this uh, external connectivity of uh, VLAN 999, uh, but it's actually mapped to bridge one. So you know what? Probably just better if I called that VLAN, well, I don't know what to call it. I'll call it trunk. Why not? That's what it is. It's a trunk. So I've connected an iOS VL2 switch to that trunk. And let's take a look at some of the config on the interface. I um, enable just the VLANs I care about. So I only have 10 and 20 on this trunk. So I'm going to say allow 10 and 20. But you can allow however many VLANs you have. Set the end cap to dot one q mode trunk, no negotiate, and I filter all BPDUs. I want to act, I want this to act kind of like a, a dumb switch just in case. I, I suppose you could turn on BPDUs and have it participate in spanning tree. I just get a little bit uneasy with that. So personal opinion, I guess, just be aware that you, you might bring down your uh, uh, physical network if you're not careful. So I filter BPDUs. Essentially, I'm not going to create any loops. I'm going to create this one connection, at least for testing. The other thing I did was uh, I allocated my VLANs locally. So you can see here, I'll, I'll raise this up a little bit. You can see I've got a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20 configured on my switch. Um, and then uh, I have a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20 um, SVI, switch virtual interface. So VLAN 10, uh, I've configured, if you want to look at that, VLAN 10 has a DHCP on it. Um, and it's got a DHCP address already. Uh, I don't have any V4 running on my VLAN 20, so if I do a show IPv6 in brief, I'll see that I do have a uh, globally routable IPv6 address on VLAN 20. So that all happened uh, magically uh, as soon as I turned off VLAN filtering, but the key is, does, am I still able to pass traffic? So if I do, let's say, I'll ping my default gateway on the IPv4 side, uh, I can pass it out VLAN 10 across the trunk. Now let's try pinging my default V6 over here. Yep, I can pass traffic. So that is how, ladies and gentlemen, you can trunk all the way to your uh, CML virtual node. The key is back here in cockpit, remember in the terminal, the key is setting VLAN filtering to zero. Everything else was pretty straightforward um, and, and kind of follows the model I did in my previous video. But the key for trunking all the way through is disabling VLAN filtering. So hopefully that helps. Uh, it definitely will help uh, from a scalability standpoint because you don't have to proliferate interfaces within uh, the CML Linux side of things. Um, and hopefully it just makes using CML that much easier for you. Thanks for watching.